I am limited for time. Uh, so much is happening so quick and so fast that I am very, very limited for time. So to make a video, if the phone rings, uh, I have to stop it, take a break and finish the video. I can't do what everybody else can do by uh, uh, entitling it the way they think I should. Uh, I can't, but there's so much information in every last one of these videos. And they, you have to be in a place with God that you have to hear his voice to know what part of it is yours. If you decide that you want to listen to me, what you need to do is to, because um, there's a lot of speakers that speak, and when they speak, they, they, uh, they have to speak such a message that goes out to a lot of people. And, and uh, say this group of people that God is reaching through them is, is a certain kind of people, and they'll hear that voice and they'll follow that because Jesus said that they won't follow anyone else. But with me, the kind of person that will listen to me is the person that's truly searching to get so close to God that they can be used by God in the spirit to do his will only. And that's what makes many of these videos very important to them. Now, there's several different groups of people that listen to me. There are people who are so mature, very, very mature, and they've been trained by God in certain things. And then you have the foolish kind that that think uh, because they read a book about demons, because they learned, read a book about this, they think that God is calling them to be used in a ministry to cast out demons. I'm not looking for that. I don't need I'm going to be straight out. I need nobody to cast out a demon in my life, in my ministry. Because you see, they don't have any power. I got victory over them 30 years ago. I got victory over them how many times that they, they can't touch me now. They can't come near me. I can see them coming. I could see them coming in people. I could see them coming anywhere. So I'm not concerned about that. So if you think that you're called to cast out demons, get on your knees and start really crying out to God because I do not believe that you have been taught right and that you know what you're talking about. Uh, a lot of people, <laughs> and I can only say it, they glorify Satan more than they glorify God. When they glorify Satan, they glorify Satan through fear of being afraid of him. They glorify the flesh through fear by being afraid of they might make a mistake. Now, they're not doing this on purpose, and God's not coming with a hammer to club over them and say, you stupid so-and-so, how could you do this? God is coming to you in the greatest of love and compassion and telling you, please, don't go that way. I love you. Come unto me, and I will help you. And so he's calling them into that secret place of the prayer closet, that place, and I, I'm not calling them the secret place like some of them have used. And, and they go into the secret place where they become this and they become that. And they're apostles. And they're, many of those things, they're liars. They're cheats. They've taken your money. That's why it's so important that I ask you for no money. That's why it's so important that only time you anybody sends me a penny is if God tells them to. And I'm not praying for God to touch your heart. I am not praying and believing that God will send anything because God told me that he is going to do it, that, that he has people that have a lot of money and he's trained them on how to hear God's voice. And those people he will send to me. So I'm, I'm just letting you know that Sending me an offering buys you nothing. Sending me an offering does not control my mind, my subconscious mind, my tongue, nothing. I will not be subject to that. When I got up this morning and I, I had a, a, a Gmail, 
I could feel this person trying to control here, 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 and here. Because they're so foolish that they think that they are going to touch a woman of God and be safe. Oh, no, my friend. You don't touch and play with the Holy Spirit. Repent of it. Because here's the thing. Nobody can deliver the Holy Spirit up to Satan. Nobody. <laughs> it won't work. Nobody can control. The United States has lived with control. They control your 401k. They control the schools. They control. That's all control. And if you look at control, the power of control, it is a spirit of rape. It just comes and does what it wants and takes all of your rights off of you. It takes everything that you could ever want or do right off of you. It steals from your body, from your mind, and from your spirit. And I gave this message this morning to somebody on the phone, and I do want to repeat it. God's leaving, leading me to repeat it. There's two times that the, uh, the physical being is their minds are like a sponge. It's what they're looking for. Little children, when they're coming into nursery and kindergarten, their mind is like a sponge. They can just learn and retain everything. So if they miss the phonics and, and the schools don't teach it, they'll never learn how to read. I'm telling you, if they pass this time, they won't, will not get how to read. If they pass this time, they will not learn about life or anything, right? All that time that they are with their parents, their parents are teaching them how to be holy, how to be righteous, how to be true, just by example, just by living it. They come they come out of the womb and they're in the surrounding of God, in another womb, a surrounding of God, because God is in you, he is round about you, and he will lead you into all truth. Well, that's what he does with the children. The babies, he just picks them up through the mother's love, and she holds them, and that she is filled with the Holy Spirit, that baby is going to become something more special than you ever dreamed. God anointed her to be a mother. The father, if he's in one accord like this, everything that is natural in the home for Jesus Christ will be worked out together with due benevolence, whatever. And those babies will grow up holy. I mean, holy. Some of them will be like a, a, a Samuel. Some of them will be real, true prophets, which God wants to use in the future. But the, the children that are under the influence, and that's what makes your walk with God so important. That's what makes your cleaning out everything. I mean, some people are saying to me, well, then you're teaching that the only way you can be saved is by doing. No, I'm not talking about salvation. Salvation was sealed with the blood. But your reward, you can go into heaven as a doorkeeper or you can go into heaven sitting with the king. Understand what I'm telling you. I'm not telling you that if you don't listen to drawing close to God, that you get nothing. Oh, no, I'm not saying that to you at all. You have salvation. But do you want to go into heaven just barely making it? Just barely? I mean, do you want to go to heaven and sit there and do the things God wants you to do? Do you want to go in there where God says, well done, thou good and faithful servant? How can he tell somebody, well done, thou good and faithful servant, who has done and played and done with the world and, and, and played and did what I said, go read Jeremiah. You commit spiritual adultery by worshiping statues, by cutting down wood and, and, and making statues, and you put them on high, and what do you do? You worship them, and they're dead. There's no life in them. So that's spiritual adultery. But he also goes further than that and shows you how to have spiritual adultery, what he's talking about worshiping over here, 
worshiping over there and God's not there. That's spiritual adultery also. We can go into that a little bit further, but this is not the lesson for that, okay? The lesson for that, for this one, is how important it is for you to hear the call of God to go with just you and him for a season so that he can clean you out. You, I told you how to do it. I told you, get yourself a little journal, write it down, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and have him compare it with the word. And if it's not of God, discard it and replace it with what God is telling you. Now, I'm not telling you replace it with a memorization of the word. That is not, that's taking a dead word and trying to make it come alive by memorizing it. That's not what God is talking to you about. God is talking to you about the reality of the word living within you as a living, breathing word. That's why he's called the living God. That's why it's called the living word. He's the living spirit. God the Father is living. That's, Jesus Christ is living. He's still alive. And he wants to live in you. And if you don't know the truth, the truth can't set you free. And you're going to be in deception. And this is what my other message was saying. Blessed is the man whom God will not mark iniquity. Because once you start on the journey of the straight and narrow, I'm going to do it God's way. Once you make up your mind, you will find the scriptures because he will lead and guide you into all truth. You will find the scriptures that will enter into your heart through experience. I know there's preachers out there that preached, if you trust in experience, you are rebellious. They don't know what they're talking about. They trusted in the fact, well, I sing all day long to God. And me and God have this wonderful relationship. But then this one over here is dying. That one over here is dying. Well, but we've got to go out into the world. Well, where do you think the world is? It starts in your own nation. This is where the world is. And this is why I said that children in this nation have been raped, murdered, abused, and used. And everybody let it go. Mothers killing their babies and molesting them. Fathers killing their babies and molesting them. All of this run rampant. Once killing babies was ushered into this country, it was a curse. A curse that is now broken. Now let God reverse all the other ones. And the only way you can do that is being close to him enough that you can gather your babies the way God wants to gather you. I hope you get this message. I hope it works with you because I am telling you, God loves you too much. He loves your children too much. If the, if the scripture says, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, then God gave you the power to become the sons of God. He didn't say that you, by believing that you were the sons of God, he gave you the power to become the sons of God, which means that takes an action of faith on your part. Your action of faith, he says, <clears throat> you are the first, first fruits. Well, Jesus, when he walked on this earth, he lived a lifetime of not touching anything. He lived a lifetime without sin. And that's what God wants you to do. He wants you in Christ to resist it. That's what made the book of James so important. But see, people only pick out what appeases their mind and tickles their ears. And people for money have been feeding it to you and you have loved it. Just like it says in other books, you love to have it so. Your prophets, your priests, and your kings lie to you. And you love to have it so. And they'll tell you, will I not visit this sin? Of course he will. And he's been visiting it. You just haven't seen it. You're still going on, yeah, but I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. And you haven't done one thing to belong to Jesus. You haven't reached out to him to come into my heart you say come into my heart okay and you you take the bible and you say come into my heart all right how does he come into your heart by living him by living the word of god 
that's how he comes in. Living. Don't you get it? Living. Living the word. The living word. Living spirit. The living spirit. Living. God is alive and well. And what, as you live and choose him. You see. If you know that Jesus Christ is so holy that he would never do certain things. You will know that he's celibate. He would never give in to the lust of the flesh for any reason to marry a woman. Never. Because he could not keep the flow of God the Father because in heaven there is no gender. Listen to what I'm telling you. The angels have no gender. The angels have no gender. Listen, I know some of you are teaching that this is the part of the female in God. Oh, you're always trying to find the female in God. God said in the beginning, he made Adam and Eve, male and female, made he them. And then right after that, he says, and he called them Adam. So, when he called them Adam, there was no separation of gender. It was a complete oneness in the spirit. The triune God is God the Father. Well, many of you are fathers. Many of you had to be a son. You're a son, Jesus Christ. Many of you have a spirit. All of you have a spirit. So you have God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. Man has, he's a father, he's a son, and he has the spirit. Okay? But the difference in this is he becomes one with his wife. And when he becomes one with his wife, there is no difference. They are mankind. Together, be fruitful and multiply. Together, they're not separate. We say, well, let's study about this because it's this. While you're busy studying all of that, your children are being taken. They're being misused. They're being abused. While you're studying things that you right now don't need to know, what you need to know is how to keep righteous and holy according to the word of God. And it is not by what you eat. It is not by what you drink. It is not by what you wear. It's not by what you don't wear. For even Paul the Apostle said, Let no man judge you on what you eat or you drink. Now, in his day, there was fashion. Just like there's fashion now. To him, he felt it was wrong to not have long hair. That's what he felt in his fashion through the years. Jesus Christ had longer hair. He was a man. And everybody knows during that time, the fashion was he had long hair. I have no power to change this. None whatsoever. As soon as it starts to grow a little bit, it starts to fall. And it starts to actually go on my pillow, go everywhere. I'm not going to do that to myself. Now, if God wants it different, he's going to grow it differently. But I'm not going to condemn myself because you think I ought to do this. Uh-uh. You are not my judge. God says, if a man takes it all before God, you have no right to touch him. Worse yet for you is, especially if you touch something that belongs to God and God alone. I'm not touching you. I'm not controlling your money. I'm not touching and controlling your personality. I'm not touching and controlling your life in any way. I'm only giving you out truth. And you do what you want to with it. I am not saying if you don't do it, you're going to go to hell. Because that's not true. That would be lying. You might miss out on the blessings. But even then, God knows you. I don't. God knows who you are. He knows where you are. He knows who's mature. And he knows who holds steady. They, the, the real believing Christian holds steady. They never move. They don't move for anybody because they have had enough life experience to keep them holy, to keep them righteous, to keep them on the right path. 
they don't they don't try the spirits because they've already done that they've been there and they've done that and if you've been there and you've done that you're not gonna you can see the spirits come there they are <laughs> and they're not gonna come here before they even think to do you evil and you can feel well if you belong to God you can feel it you can feel it at a far distance that's where he is your fortress he is your high tower you stand on a fortress in a high tower and you see across the hillside, you can see the enemy trying to pop up to come in and attack you. And you look at that and you laugh, you rebuke it because he can't get near you. Why? Like I said, the scripture says, I know Paul and I know Jesus, but who are you? That who are you is sitting there trying to cast out demons and bring glory to himself and, and they're praying and praying and this is the first stage of deliverance garbage this is the first day of deliverance garbage you must go into this room and be all up. garbage when you have God and are anointed to cast out demons you just walk in a room and bam they're gone because the experience that you had between you and God, not you and people, you and God, not you and people. Once you made sure that they were out of your life, out of your mind, out of everything you do, out of everywhere you go, you don't have to go through that process again the second time because you're not after the flesh. You are after the spirit. Know where you're at. Know if you've made it there or if you haven't made it there. Examine yourselves. Find out who you are. Find out where you're going. And I guarantee you, if you were to write me something, you would not be trying to correct me. Believe me. You'd be too afraid. The fear of God would be upon you. You wouldn't be trying to teach me, to tell me, or correct me. Because, see, your eyes are in the wrong place. That Bible is supposed to bring you into here to look at yourself. Because if you're not looking at yourself to change it, to let Jesus in, you're going to look at me and you're going to find fault. You're going to see a reflection of yourself. So if you think I'm doing this, you're doing it. If you think I'm saying that, you're saying it. If you think I made this mistake, you made it. Because I've already been there. and I've already done that. You can either believe me or not believe me. It makes no difference to me. It will not change me. It will not stop me. Like I said in my book, it literally says, gather by the millions and pray against her. Try and pull her down. But who can pull God down from heaven? Who can pull him up from the earth? Who can deliver him unto Satan? Who? Who can do that? Nobody. So if all your prayers are bashing your head up against that wall in your prayer closet, begging God, destroy her, pull her down. She thinks she's this. She thinks she, all of that judgment and all of that warfare and all of that. I'm sitting there laughing because you're so foolish. You're so foolish. Get your own. He says, get the speck you're, that you're trying to get out of your brother's eye get the beam out of your own first see nobody wants to apply it first well, I didn't do that I would never do that I know me sure you do well I, that's why he tells you he tells it to you in Matthew plainly that if anybody has anything against you for you to back up now, he's not telling me to back up because I've already been there. I've had enough of you people come against me. And God protected me and he saved me. I do not defend myself. I don't have to. I do exactly what God tells me to do. And you either believe it or you don't. And if you believe it, then that's fine. But I'm not going to guarantee you that God's going to do this with you. God's going to give that with you because you did this and you... I, the look scripture is yours it is yours 
according to your obedience to God. The blessings are yours according to your obedience to God. And if sometimes, and believe you me, I've been there a million times. Sometimes you feel, boy, there must be something wrong with me because it just doesn't seem to be working. I just can't get it right. What's wrong with me? God, I'm going to have to give this up. This can't be. This can't be. And boom, the Spirit of God will come down and show you. Uh -uh, I'm here. So don't give up. Striving towards the high calling of God. Because he wants his church together. He wants you clean and holy. He wants you because you're going to recognize one another. When you hit this certain mark of God, you're going to recognize one another. And when you recognize one another, listen to what I'm going to tell you, God will be magnified in his glory. You get one that's pure and holy, and you get another one that's pure and holy, and another one that's pure and holy. God is magnetized four times. He's magnified four times. He's magnified. He's magnified. He's magnified. If you stand alone, you can't be magnified. If you think I've been alone, you're very silly. If you think that I <clears throat> got raised up, oh yeah, I spent 10 years alone with him. But I also have those that know, that are pastors that know I'm a prophet. That God witnessed to them beyond a shadow of a doubt who I am. <clears throat> and probably one day I'll have one of them be able to come and sit with me and talk or at least on the phone so that you will know I'm for real. But I don't need to do that. Some of you are so precious, so just waiting and wanting God for so long, you can't even believe that this is what God is putting in your ears, that this is what he's putting in your life. Because according to everything you've been taught, you were never going to reach his place. He was always going to be given to others that lifted themselves up that high. When you knew something inside of you was so different, so holy, so righteous, you knew it. But you would never go up there and take that spot. You would never go ahead of God. You did what God told you to do. You were mature. You stayed right there where he wanted you. How could I tell you? That was how he raised me. So I'm going to recognize you. The second you come into my life, I'll recognize you. But I'll also tell you who you are. And I'll tell you, I won't argue with you. I won't even rebuke you. I'll just delete you. And if I delete you, you better go find out why. And when you want to put the blame on me, understand you haven't made it like you think you have. 